Hi, I'm Akis. Over the last one and a half years, I've been completely renovating and building out the new workshop. And it's finally in a state where I can shoot video in here again. This is just a short one about chip covers on the Habega slash Schaublin 102 lathe. Back in 2017, when we bought the lathe, it came with this cross light. It's not original to the machine. The machine itself is a Habega and was originally set up for production work. This cross light has no name on it, but I think it's a Schaublin from the 1940s. It's uh, quite old. The design is, isn't it as nice as the newer ones and it's completely clapped out, but it, it did the job. And having watched Robin Vanzetti's video about chip covers on his Harding lathe and liking clean machines and especially liking an easy time cleaning machines, I wanted chip covers on this machine as well. I made these covers. This is some leather screwed onto a PVC stick and I drilled the stick and glued in some magnets. This one goes on the back of the bottom slide to protect its waist when it's cranked out like this. And I made this aluminum piece leather on the bottom to protect the bed and also screw to a stick of PVC, magnets glued in. This one goes here on the bed to the left of the cross light so chips don't fall into the bed. These simple covers kind of did their job and that they kept most of the chips out but also they didn't do their job when using ferrous materials because of course the magnets I used to attach them collect ferrous chips and that makes it really hard to clean these, especially when chips get down in these pockets where the magnets are glued in and it's pretty much impossible to get all of them out of there. And then you have them between the cover and the slide and ugh, it's just not great. A while later I switched cross slides. I bought this newer model, much nicer design of eBay also used and worn but not nearly as bad as the clapped out old one. When I switched I at first kept the covers as they were and used them but eventually I got fed up and decided okay it's time to make something new that's addressing the issues I had with these. The first thing I did is make a new cover for the back of the bottom slide. This newer model has a dovetail back here that's used to mount accessories like for example a part of tool and I used that dovetail in my 3D printed cover with these little tabs that grab into it to mount the cover. This slides on here, overhangs quite a bit so when cranking out the slide all the way there's still cover over here where without it the waste would be exposed. My first thought for the bed cover was to use this stuff. This is a glass fiber mat that's covered with PTFE, it's uh, for kitchen ovens. But it's, it's cheap and it's tough and heat resistant, so it's a pretty nice material for chip covers. And my thought was, okay, I'll roll this out over here and I'll make some kind of holder that grips this material and clamps down to the bed over here next to the cross light and probably a second one over here. And I was starting to sketch out the clamps down to the bed portion of the holder in CAD and I realized, okay, actually I have a better idea. Let's not use this material. Let's just do the same as I did on the bottom slide here and just 3D print the whole thing and that's what I ended up doing. 
Okay, here we are on TreeCAD. I started with a sketch of the lathe bed itself. And instead of using the normal dimensions from the catalog, I measured the actual lathe bed in the shop because I want to use the T-slots for clamping and the dimension of these vary a bit. After I had the sketch, I padded it so I have a model of the lathe bed. Then I made a new body for the cover, imported the geometry of the bed with a subshape binder so I can reference it in the new body. And I made a new sketch for the cover itself. And this sketch has the geometry of the cover that overhangs on both sides of the bed. And in the T-slot, here these little legs with these domes at the end that flex inwards and allow the cover to snap into the T-slot. And over here, also on the side T-slots, I have fingers that grip. And then I padded that. And at this point, I printed a short 10 millimeter long section of it, tried it on the bed and made adjustments to the snap mechanism until I was satisfied and then continued. The cross light has an alignment stop on the front of the lathe bed that would interfere here. So I made a cutout, a roof over the alignment stop and then a loft to join the two surfaces. And next, so no chips get in between the cover and the cross light over here. Made this wall. And then with a sketch, cut away part of it so I get a nice fillet here. First on the top side and then down here. And I think, yes, I need to recompute. Down here, this little angle. And then I had my finished model of the cover. And here you can see again, it snaps into the T-slot and also over here. Here's the cover printed. I printed it in white because of uh, filming. And also a white background is really nice when you want to use a microscope on top of the lathe. To mount this cover, you just put it over the bed, clip it in, push it over to the cross light, and then you add the bottom slide cover. And this overlaps the bed cover, so chips don't get in between them. And with these covers, cleaning is super easy. Just take a brush, brush chips from the cover, give us back into the chip pan and you're done. Thanks to my friends who let me use the nice Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera. And thank you all for watching.